This is a demonstration of the famous diffraction experiment designed by Ernst Abbe to illustrate his theory of the microscope and of microscopic imaging. His work revealed that the information about fine details of the object is transmitted to the image by the rays diffracted by the detail. I'm going to demonstrate this experiment using the UC2 toolbox. This is our microscope system. Here we have a laser with a tiny lens and a big lens to expand it, and that illuminates our sample. Our sample is a very fine net used for collecting fish eggs. Then comes the objective and a tube lens that form an image of the sample on the camera here. In this position, we can access the back focal plane of the objective. I leave it free for now, but when we place here an aperture, we'll be able to modify the information that is transmitted through the microscope and that contributes to the image on the camera. This is a so-called beam splitter. And when I place it here, half of the incoming light is still transmitted, while the other half is reflected to the side arm, where, with two extra lenses, we'll be able to image the back focal plane on a camera as well. So we have now here the image of our sample of the, of the net, as we see it on one of the cameras. And this is the Fourier transform of it, as it looks in the back pocket plane, image on the camera in the side arm. I've mentioned that uh, the image is formed by the rays diffracted by a detail, more precisely by the interference of the diffracted rays with the zeroth order which is the central peak in our back focal plane, so this one here. Let's have a look at what this actually means. I'll start by placing a circular aperture in the back focal plane of the objective here. And as I slowly close it, changing the diameter of the transmitting area, we block out the higher diffraction orders that form that form the image and that the higher f that carry the high frequencies and hence fine details and we see in the image plane on the left hand side that these 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 details blur and the sharp edges soften the more orders we cut out the more blurry the image gets Now we exchange the circle aperture for a rectangular one. And we explore its effect on the back focal plane. When we block the light in one direction only, so I block the x direction, letting through only the zeroth y order, this, the square pattern disappears and in the image plane on the left we see only lines now. This is because there is no x order that would transmit the information about the structure in this perpendicular direction. We can do the same trick in the, in the other direction, so closing from the y, letting through only the zeroth x order and we're again seeing lines, but this time of the other orientation, but there is no square pattern. Eventually, when we close the aperture from both X and Y, uh, letting through only the zeroth order, cutting out all the higher orders that carry the information about the image, we'll, so we'll be left with only the central peak, the zeroth order, and we see that all the image information is lost and we see only some background noise. On the other hand, we can block the zeroth order only. I'm going to use a dot drawn on a microscope slide and place it again in the back focal plane. And so when we're blocking only the zeroth order, like 
this. We are still able to see the square pattern of our sample, but we are in a so-called dark field imaging mode. I'm going to explain what that means in the next step. We can even block the zeroth and first orders with a simply a bigger dot in the back focal plane. And we're still somehow seeing the squares, but the now the high frequency information, the noise, is much more visible than the basic pattern. So I've mentioned the dark field imaging mode. This, what this actually means, um, in when we block the zeroth order in one direction only, so I'll block it in block the zeroth y order. We are still able to see the square patterns, but suddenly it appears that we have twice as many squares in the x direction than we had before. This is because when the zeroth order is blocked, the, image, the edges are enhanced, and because there are, there are twice as many edges as squares, we, it appears that we see them twice. The same, of course, works in the other direction when I block the zeroth x order. We have twice as many edges in the y direction in the image, image plane on the left side. Let's go back to the rectangular aperture and let's find out what is the minimal amount of orders that we actually need to have a reliable image of our sample. We said that they always interfere with the zeroth order, so we shouldn't need both sides. We can close the aperture and let through only a quarter of, of the orders, so a quarter of the back focal plane. We see that our pattern isn't, hasn't changed much. And we can also block the higher diffraction orders, as we learned that they carry only the information about the fine details. And so when we let to only the zeroth and the first orders, right now, we are still able to see our square pattern nicely. All this led Abba to the conclusion that the distance between the diffraction orders and due to that the amount of them that get transmitted through the microscope is crucial for the image formation. And from this conclusion, he formed his famous diffraction equation uh, describing the resolution limit. If you'd like to try his experiments yourself, you can build this setup following the assembly and in alignment instructions in the UC2 GitHub repository.